Hey there everyone, it's Kathy Champion and you're back with me on my YouTube channel, Kathy's Random Acts of Stamping. I am an independent stamping up demonstrator and I'm located here in Gastonia, North Carolina and I want to thank you so much for stopping by today. Um, I hope that I can inspire you, hopefully teach you something a little new or maybe just um, give you some ideas on how to make some cards yourself. If you are uh, in the market for a stamping up demonstrator. Now that doesn't mean that you have to host a party. I know back in the day we hosted parties. Uh, we would come and set up. You'd invite some friends. We'd make some cards. We'd make some new friends and uh, that's how it worked. It's not quite like that during our COVID pandemic um, thing and I came into stamping up right at the brink of all of this so for me it hasn't been that way what I do is I show you how to make cards here on uh, YouTube now it's certainly not to say that you can host a party you most certainly can you can host a virtual party and uh, you can invite some of your friends to watch some of my videos um, I could even do a little private video for you and your friends um, totally up to you how you want to do it but if you host a party you can earn free stamps this is a host skip whoops that's not it <laughs> this one is this is actually the uh, dragonfly garden that one is for sale but if you wanted to up the uh, stamping up experience you could th get this sweet sampler and look at that beautiful dragonfly is that not gorgeous I love this I love the little small hydrangea you've got some little um, this is like a little background stamp that you could use look at these lovely flowers beautiful beautiful stamp set and you can and this is def, a clean stamp set um, I have put my uh, stickers on so this stamp set is gorgeous and I can't wait to bring this and do some stamping with all of you to show you just how lovely that is but you can receive that for free but that's not what we're doing today I also want to tell you real quick about my host code this runs through Monday and then starting Tuesday I'll have a new one it will still include everything for the month of uh, March so you'll still be in the drawing even if you use the second um, host code to uh, be in the drawing to win this darling donkey uh, stamp set any purchase will qualify you for this darling donkey stamp set so if you make a purchase of any amount on my online store during the month of, of uh, March and use the host code either the one that's current now or the one that I will put up for Tuesday either one of those host codes will get you in the drawing for the stamp set darling darling stamp set again it is one of the um, cling stamp sets they stamp so beautifully this is a brand new stamp set never been used and it can be yours if you um, place an order and then we will have the drawing on um, April the 1st and it will not be an April Fool's joke I promise okay getting back to my host code also, if you make a $50 purchase and use this host code, it has to be before um, uh, tax and shipping, $50 in retail product, you will also get a free gift from me. And the gifts vary from month to month, but you will get a card, a thank you card for your order, along with a um, free gift. Okay, enough about that. I want to show you what I was playing with a while ago, and then I said, Oh my goodness, I need to bring this and show y'all exactly what I'm doing. I pulled this paper out, Playing With Patterns, which is the name of the paper. And this sheet right here is the sheet that I cut down. Now, I wasn't even thinking about a one-sheet wonder when I did this. I just thought the paper was pretty, so I pulled out some Calypso Coral and some Crushed Curry. Uh, and also a... Um, blushing bride because I saw just faint faint uh, colors of blushing bride in there do y'all see it I definitely see it so I, I decided I made um, two card bases that are crushed curry one calypso coral and one um, blushing bride and then I went ahead and I used my die set called Pierce Blooms and y'all know I love this die set. This die set can stand alone without any stamps at all. 
because it cuts out it doesn't so much cut out your stamped images this is really a standalone um, die set but if you want the stamp set as which is called in bloom and let me see if I can pull my in bloom that's hydrangea in bloom I've got it right here and it is gorgeous all by itself and it is a photopolymer stamp the it has such a whimsical look to it but we're not using the stamp set today we're just going to use the dies and I just want to show you I dropped all my little bits and pieces and goodies out of my card and I didn't mean to do that so let's see if, and what I did is I was putting these pieces on my card base I was like wow I really, really, really need to bring this and show y'all how cute it is. So I thought what we'll do, we'll put these together, but how much fun would it be for me to show you with a different color? So let's grab a different color palette. I'm going to lay my dies over here because this one's got Purple Posy, um, Coastal Cabana, Night of Navy, Crush Curry, and Calypso Coral. This would be a great piece to cut. Hmm. But I think I'm going to go with that one. I love that piece anyway. And we can get at le we can get four cards out of this piece by cutting it. And I saw another dem a demonstrator. And I am so bad about watching YouTube videos at night when I go to bed. And then I totally don't know who I'm seeing because I'm not paying attention. I kind of got to let it play in the background. And sometimes I fall asleep. <laughs> do y'all ever do that? I'm sure you do. But what I saw her do, she would take, and I think hers was a, um, what, did, what did I call it earlier? Um, <laughs> lost my whole train of thought. But nevertheless, what she did was she measured her cardstock at one and a half inches and brought her track her her arm down and she used a pencil and made a tick mark right make sure I'm getting into the track am I in the track I don't think my pencil lead is down enough and what she did is she made a tick mark there and then she turned it again at one and a half and again a tick mark I thought this was ingenious and so when I started playing with this today I thought I gotta bring this to y'all um, because I'm definitely using different papers and a whole different suite of products and I thought okay we're gonna case copy and share everything y'all so you just keep going all the way around your piece of paper on all four sides until you get those little tick marks. I'm hoping this one's going to show because it's on that night of navy, but yeah, I can see it. I don't know if you can. There it is. Um, but now we have a tick mark at one and a half inches all the way around. And what you're going to do is you're going to take your tick mark and line it up in your trimmer and then hold it and pivot that bottom side right here all the, all the way around into that track. You want both of those to line up in the cut track. And what you're going to do is you're going to close your arm down, making sure that they are in the track, and you're going to slice. Okay, now you want to hold this together as best you can, and you're going to put it back together and then you're going to get this tick mark along with this one and this is going to be the hard one to see um, let me make sure that I can see that one I might have to mark it oh there it is yeah let me mark that with something that I can see like let's put a little white dot on it with one of my jelly roll pens I just need to see this Yes, but that helps me now where I can see it. Okay, so let's put this back together right like that. You want to try to keep them together as much as you possibly can. And then we're going to put this tick mark and this tick mark into your track. 
keeping these pieces as straight as you can. That's probably the hardest part is holding these two pieces of paper together, but it's definitely doable. So we are going to close these down just like that and slice. Now, if they're not perfect, it's okay. It's no, and look, you've got four pieces that are kind of wonky. You know, these are kind of wonky pieces. But let's go in and let's get um, a card base that is Purple Posy. And I think since I did the other ones in the Crushed Curry and the Calypso, I want to do, I want to do a Knight of Navy and a crush, no, we got, well, you, we're definitely going to need to use, well, we got mint, let's see what color that was. Is it mint macaron or is it Calypso Coral Coastal Cabana? So we need some Coastal Cabana. And that is this beautiful color right here. And we got a card base, that's good. And I also want a purple posy. That's such a pretty color. And I don't know if y'all know it or not, but the end colors for 2019 through 2020 uh, or 2021 are going away. And the purple posy, unfortunately, is one of them. There is a piece of that we can cut that down to use as a card. And I'm also going to grab... Um, Let's see, do we have scrap pieces of this? No, I've got blues, but no. Okay, that was Seaside Spray, and I don't think I, want, I need that color. Um, we got Coastal Cabana, Purple Posy. Now we have one card base. Let's go ahead and score this at four and one four. And fold it. That gives us a card base. Now this piece right here is five and it's a little bit over five and a half so we're going to cut this down to five and a half and we're going to keep that strip because we might be able to use that on another card as a sentiment and again we're going to go ahead and score this at four and one fourth now if you're new with this trimmer be careful and make sure you're scoring with your score blade because i have done it and i'm sure all of us have it's very easy to grab that cut blade and cut right through your card and then you're like, oh no, now i got to do this all over again. And we don't want to do that. I'm going to put this piece back in. Um, and now I want to go ahead and score this one at four and one fourth. So we already had four card bases just that quick. So, and we'll just fold that one. Card bases. And I'm going to show you how these pieces are going to work well on each one of these cards. Let's do, let's get our bone folder first. Let's see, do I have it over here? No, it's up here in my little tool caddy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this a good varnish. And your bone folder is crucial for getting your score lines to lay nice and flat. So we are just going to burnish these down, just like that. And I found out if you do both sides of it, turn it over and do the other side, you have a better chance of that laying nice and flat, much more than just doing one side. Just one of those little things. I mean, you don't have to. It's definitely not... Um, a criteria in card mating, making, but I do like it. I like for my card bases to lay. All right, so we need to decide now if we want our cards to go landscape or portrait. So this is a portrait card. It opens this way, and then if you do a landscape, it's going to open this way. So let's look at our pieces. This is so pretty. Look at that little white dot I've got showing there. I'm going to get my mono sand eraser. Now, Stampin' Up! doesn't sell these. Um, this is a different product. I wish they would, but you can pretty much sand anything off of your cardstock just by using that little sand eraser. 
All right, so now I need to decide if I want this to go here or whether I want to do it here. And I'm thinking I want to do it this way. So I'm going to lay them out before I commit. And here's our purple posy. And this one I think I want it to go like this. So it's going to be landscape, I think. Yeah, let's do this one. I'm going to save that one for a different piece. I think I want this one. I want this one like this. Again, my pencil marks are showing, so just make sure you take your eraser. And that's why it's so good to use the pencil, especially if you have a nice soft eraser like on this little big mechanical pencil there, so great. I like the purple posy on this. I don't know why, but I do. Mm, I love it on that one too. Okay, so how about if we do this one on here? And let's change it around. I changed my mind. I want this one on here. And you might change your mind a hundred times before you commit. So there's two like that. And then we're going to use the Calypso Coral on this one like so. Isn't that cute? And that way you have four cards really, I mean, just lickety split. So now what we're going to do is we are going to lay them out like this. And now we need to decide what color flowers do we want to put on each one of these. And for me, for me, there's no doubt. And I got some flowers here where I had cut out for the other Calypso Coral one. So maybe we could do some Calypso Coral. Right about here. And there's a crushed curry for the center. Isn't that pretty? And we might even be able to bring a little greenery into that. Just like so. See how pretty that looks? Bring this down just a little bit. And we still got room for a sentiment. And remember, I told you we could put, we can use anything for our sentiments. In fact, do you all remember when I did the mini messages and I cut out all of those sentiments? Let's see. And I put them in, I think I put them in a bag. Aha! Mini messages. Uh, do you all remember me using this? And we, yep, there they are. <laughs> After I went through all of that, they were right here all along. So we could definitely use some of these for our card today. But I also brought this punch over. Um, this is our tailored tag. And this is such a great punch. I love it. And I thought it would play good with these angles. But you want to know what? we might very well be able to um, use some of these. Because look, we've got a happy birthday. How cute would that be? And how festive would that be? And you know, if you wanted to bring your flowers down here, you could do them like this and put your happy birthday up here. No right way and no wrong way to use these pieces on your card. But I tell you what, let's go ahead and get committed and let's go ahead and glue some pieces down. So I'm going to start here with the purple posy and I'm just going to take some liquid glue and I'm going to run some liquid glue all around my edges and through the middle. And then I am going to put this down right about here. 
and I'm giving myself that little bit of border and I've got a little tiny bit of a pencil mark so I'm just going to erase that and now I think I might use these flowers right here so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my middles in just by putting down some glue right in the middle and press that in and let's do about one of these and maybe one of these. Now these were all cut from the um, Pierced Bloom dies. Such a darling, darling stamp set, and I mean die set. And like I said, this one can so stand alone. You would not need um, an additional, you wouldn't have to buy the stamps if you didn't want them. But, you know, I say the stamps are, are gorgeous and they do their own thing. So why would you not want both? You know, for me, I always want it all. <laughs> are y'all like that? Do y'all always want it all? I think a lot of us crafters are that way. We want all of it. All right, I'm going to just put this down right about there. I'm going to let that leaf come up to that top corner. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and commit to my leaf first. And I'm going to do that by just smearing a little bit of glue all along. Just like that. And then I'm going to put this down right there. But I think I want to pop it up on a dimensional. So let's grab, and you know what? I cut a whole bunch of my dimensionals the other night. I set in all my little pieces that were little bits and pieces, I cut them up in, to make them easy to use. Now, I don't know if this is something that you would want to do with yours, but when you get to the end of the pack, let me show you. Uh, get my pack out. See, after you get your dimensionals off, you have all of this around the edge that can be cut down into pieces. So that's what I did. I cut all of these little edges, and I had so many of them. So what I want to do is I want to use these because, you know, we don't want to waste them. So I'm going to turn that over, and I'm going to put one right about here, and maybe one right there. And that right there is going to give us enough to hold that flower down. And I am going to pull the backers off. And I'm going to put this right here. And I'm going to tuck this one. I want to glue this one straight down. And I want to tuck it underneath there just so it's peeking out. Because I think that's cute right there and I'm going to let it go over the peak of that uh, little edge right there so just tuck it up under there and hold it in place and let it adhere and if you wanted to you could put these are the little ones that comes I mean I just cut out a bunch of these and you could do some little pieces of these um, I'm going to get my take your pick tool this thing is absolutely a gem. You've got your little putty in that lets you pick your pieces up and this makes it so easy to use a little bit of glue with one hand and your take your pick tool with the other and be able to put these in just a little here and there wherever you want one to fall. Just like that. And I'm wondering if I want to put another stem right there. I think I do. I like that. I like that coming out from underneath. This one, I'm only going to put glue down here and on these two bottom leaves, a little bit right there. And I'm just going to slide that up, up 
right about there and I want that to curl up right there on the bottom. Gives a little bit more depth to our card. Now how pretty is that? That card is just gorgeous and we didn't do that much to it. Uh, so now let's go ahead and see if we can find it says, Hooray, it's your birthday. And I think that would look really cute popped up right here. Let's see what else we have. Hoping your day is full of love, laughter, and joy. That would be pretty. Uh, we need that one going on and one that's going the other direction. Or this one would need to go the other way. Be strong, be brave, you've got this. That would be cute on there. You know, it all depends on what um, you want to say. I'm happy to celebrate these moments with you. I love that. We're going to do this one. So again, I'm going to use some of these little leftover dimensionals. And we're going to pop this one up on two. Looks like the backers got off of one of them and they kind of got on top of each other. But you know what? That is okay. Yep, it's definitely on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one here. And then I'm going to grab one like this and put it right here. And I'm going to see if I can find another one that's similar in size. This one looks good. It looks identical. You do have to play with these a little bit. And what you want to do is make sure before you put the other one down on it that you've taken the adhesive off of the bottom one. And then just put it down like that. This is going to give this a lot of extra dimensional when you sit it down on your card. And I'm going to rake these in my trash. Just like that. And look how pretty that turned out. And now we have a beautiful card that we could be happy to send to anyone. Isn't that gorgeous? So we're going to lay that one over here because one done. And now let's grab this one. And this one I think I'm going to want to cut some of that purple posy. So I'm going to do the same thing here with these little wonky pieces. I'm just going to go around and get those all glued up or down and then put that on just like this. Got a little bit of glue right there. You want to be careful because sometimes the glue makes a little bit, got a little pencil mark right there. If you get glue on your card, I don't know if you have one of these little gummy erasers, but sometimes you can get the glue off and it won't be noticeable just by using one of these. And they, it's a Xyron eraser, and they are wonderful for taking glue off of your card if you get glue somewhere you don't want it. So another little tidbit of information. All right, I'm going to grab a Purple Posy and that Coastal Cabana. And let's see, Coastal Cabana is right here. Let's see if we have some scraps. I've got a couple of pieces. I think this one right here would make a card base, so we're not going to use it. We're going to use the other piece that looks like it might be a little bit too thin. This piece back in. So I'm going to cut some little flowers out of this. And let's get a piece of the purple posy. I thought I had, no, we did two, did we do two card bases out of the, no, we just did one. I thought we had another piece of that purple posy, but I guess not. That's okay, we're going to have some scraps now because we're going to cut a whole piece. So let's move some of our stuff out of our way and get my top back on my glue before I have a mess. Y'all know I cannot craft without making a total mess. Y'all know that about me, right? 
<laughs> if you have been um, tuning into my channel for any length of time, then you are going to so know this. So I think what I'm going to do with this piece, I'm going to cut this down to about three inches. And then I'm going to take this to my dye machine. I think this time I might bring the dye machine to y'all. And show you, some of you that are new may not understand exactly what we're talking about when I say I'm die cutting or how these dyes really work. So I kind of want you to understand the entire process. And since I do have quite a few newbies, I don't want anybody to get lost in the shuffle. So here's our stampin' and cut and, and emboss machine. Let me come back out a little, oops, wrong way. Let's come this way. These um, pads fold up like this, and it makes the machine, this is what it looks like when it's sitting folded up. And then when you sit it down on your work surface and you fold these out, it has rollers on the inside you get these plates that come with it, and this is your number one plate. This is always your platform plate. You will always need to use this one. Now, if you're using thin dyes or thin thin dyes like we're using, you're going to use your number two plate. Then you're going to need a cutting pad, and this one you can see it is. They do not look like this when you get them. They are clear, see-through, and beautiful. This is because this one has been used and used and loved quite a bit. But that's okay, it's still working, so we're going to continue to use it. And you have one more of these, and this is the top plate. You can see, you can see through this one a lot better, but it is starting to take some wear and tear. So you have two of no, the number three plates. So I'm going to lay that purple posy up here, and I'm going to grab my set of dies, and here's my dies. And I think for this one, I want this flower. So I'm going to lay that one there and maybe this flower and I've got these on magnetic sheets if you're wondering why they were hard to come off I'm going to lay that one right there and let's go ahead and cut this one I'm going to cut quite a few of them while I'm cutting I'm going to cut a couple of those the two of those cut together two of these cut together so we're just going to put as many on here as we can get we're going to come back because I want to do some leaves in the green. So we're going to cut those first. So I lay that um, number three plate over top of my other plate with my cardstock and dies in. And you see how easy that is to crank through? I mean, it literally feeds itself through. Um, one of the easiest die cut machines I've ever turned. I love, love, love the stamp and cut and emboss machine. So now I'm going to move that over to the side and I'm going to show you the magic. When you take that plate off and you lift up all of your little pieces. Now, sometimes they're stuck into your dies, but I found out if you just drop your die like that, they come out. Um, most of the time they come, they're out just like that. Look how easy they cut. So beautiful. And I'm going to leave these dies right here because I am going to be using them again. So we'll just lay those up there. And look at that. We've got all of these beautiful flowers to use on our card. And see how gorgeous they're going to look. And we're going to use a little bit of the um, Knight of Navy. And I do have a piece of it right here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and scrape these off. Sometimes they get um, stuck on, on the... Uh, cut plate, but all you have to do is, rate, is just rub your fingernail under the edge of them and they come right off and you can just scoop them off. And you got all of those embellishments now. So I'm going to cut some of my little centers. Now let's bring the card back over and let's take one of these and see how that looks right there in the middle. Isn't that cute? Now you can do those or you can do these. I love these. I think they make it look so dainty, and that's what I usually go for. If you see, I did that one on this flower, and I did one of the plain circles on that little, the other little flower. But now we've got one of these. So let's see what one of these looks like on the little flower. Like... 
mm, I don't know if I like that on the on the little one. I think I might use one of these. But I love that navy on that um, on that purple posy. Isn't that gorgeous? And these dyes do have a right and wrong way, and you can feel. You can literally feel the smooth side is the right side. We need some green now. So we have this Coastal Cabana, and I want to play in to what we have here on doing some leaves on here. So I'm going to grab a couple of these leaves, maybe this one, and this one, and this one. You can choose whichever ones you like. It's not, it's totally a pro. Lay that one right there. And now we've got leaves. Look at that. Oh, are they not so stinking cute? And that's going to play up so pretty because it's going to pick up that color right there. And look at these. Oh, heavens to Betsy. I love it. I love it. I love it. So, so pretty. Okay, I'll scrape that one off and we'll lay this piece over here. I'm trying to keep my dies all over here in one little pile so I don't lose them. And now I tell you what let's do. Let's go ahead and put our flowers together. I've got my take your pick tool. I've got my multi-purpose glue and all I'm going to do is put a drop. pick that up and sit it right in the middle and I'm going to let that adhere. I'm going to do the same thing for this one. I got my piece on my uh, take your pick tool and I'm going to sit that down right there and now we can decide where we want to put these and I want one to be right here. I want this leaf to come out right about there because see how it's going to play with the color there. And I want this one to go right here and a couple of these leaves to come out from under there. Isn't that pretty? Love it. Dimensionals. We're going to go back to our little dish of dimensionals. And I am going to put one of these on here. I'm going to use the I like to use this little paper piercer just to pick these off because it makes it so easy. Well, normally it does, but that one just didn't want to wrangle for me. But it does make it easy to be able to um, put these like you want them. So I am going to lay that one down right there. And then I'm going to take my glue and I'm just going to put some glue on that stem. And I'm going to stick it right underneath that flower so it looks like it's just laying right there attached to that beautiful little flower. And we got a little bit of glue right there, but it's okay because this glue will dry clear. Again, I'm going to get another little dimensional. And I'm going to put this one down right here. Just like that. And then pull that off. And then I am going to pop that right there. And then we're going to do the same thing here with the glue. We're going to take a little bit of glue. I love these stitches in this. I'm going to bring this up closer so you can see it. But if these dies put stitching on each one of your flowers and your leaves. And it is so pretty. Look at that. Do you see that stitching? Oh, beautiful. And another thing that is so beautiful with the stamping up is the color coordination. Now I'm going to put one more of these little flowers by themselves right here. And the reason I want it is because I just really want to accentuate that night of navy. So I'm going to pick that up so that I can make sure that I get it right where I want it, which is right there. And now all we need is a sentiment. What about, thank you for being you. Look at, is that not adorable? So we're going to put that on this stamp, on this uh, card. And let's get a couple of our little pieces. There's one there. I'm bound and determined to use up all these little pieces because, you know, 
my mama always said, want not, waste not. So, you know, we always hear our mother's voice in our heads. I don't know if y'all do, but I know I do. For me, it was my grandmother. My grandmother raised me, so. Um, but she was my mama because she was she raised me. And you know, whoever raises you, that's mama. Look at that. Oh, we're going to come back and we're going to put bases inside the cards. But there we go. We've got two really pretty cards already using that paper, that particular um, system. Now, I'm going to also put these together because, well, let's see. Yeah, these. Because I have these pieces already cut, so why not? So we're going to do the same thing with this one. Oh, that, that would be pretty too, wouldn't it? <laughs> so indecisive. We, know we would need either the uh, Crushed Curry or the Purple Posy for that. And that's the one thing with every paper pack that you get from Stampin' Up! You're going to have a color palette to work with which is so great because that way it takes all that guesswork out of making your uh, cards and I think that's just ingenious and it's just that's just so stamping up all right we're gonna put this piece in the middle of this flower just like that and then we're going to put this one, and we're going to put this little piece in the middle of this one. This one we're going to do smaller flowers on it. And we're going to put this one right here and maybe pop this one up. Yeah, let's glue this one straight down. So I'm just going to put some glue on the back, lay it where I want it to fall. And then we're going to pop this one up, so I'm going to grab another one of my little uh, dimensions. And let's put this one right here. This is also a good way to use up scraps. You know, yes, of course I did cut a 6x6, six six, um, but, you know, you can take your scraps and cut little pieces down and do the same thing as I, what I just did. So I'm going to stick that leaf right up underneath the edge of that. Again, a little glue. A little glue goes a long ways. So let's just pop that up under here. And press, 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 press. And then let's put this right here. Oops. And let's slide that one up and see how the glue kind of oozes a little bit, but that's all right. That's perfectly okay. We're just going to commit that down into that glue just like that. Oops, we still got a little spray, a little stray flower here. And we're going to glue it down maybe right up here. Just like that. And you know what? We're going to go one further. We're going to put one of these on here. How about right here? Yep, I think I like it up here. And we can also grab another, um, and I think I'm going to do this one flat down and just let it kind of come under the edge of that one just a tiny bit. Let's put our center in it. And I do I want to pop that one up? Maybe I want to pop this one up. So I'm going to grab a, another dimensional. Dropped my cap for my take your pick tool, so I had to get that up. Didn't want my puppies to get a hold of it. Y'all know I call my puppies, <laughs> puppies, but they are a far cry from being babies. <laughs> and Toby is five now, and Bella is three, so they are 
absolutely my little my little book of bears. I love them. I love them dearly. Let's see if we've got a leaf. I think we can do one leaf off of here. Maybe out that way. Yeah, I think I like it out that way. And all I'm doing in doing this is I'm just building my card. Just trying to build um, a, a little bit of a floral scene right there on my card. So what I think I want to do for this one is I'm going to punch out um, I think I'm going to punch out a piece of coral. And I have this piece here that's got cut kind of wonky. So I saved this because even if I cut a piece that's bad, and this was definitely bad, see how wonky that's cut? It didn't work out for me, so you know what? I saved it. And this is where these will come in handy. I can use this to get punches out of without going into my cardstock. So now how cute would this be with a sentiment stamped on it? And I think I like it right here. And leave that open with that pink showing. So let's look at our itty bitty. I've got itty bitty greetings and itty bitty birthday. And I love these itty bitties because they fit so well on small labels like our punches. So I am going to look at what I've got. And the good thing about our, our um, if you put your labels on your stamp, you can open them up like this and see exactly what you got. And it's, I mean, it's great. So how about this? Um, they say it's your birthday. And then we can do a big happy birthday on the inside. So let's bring this over to here. I'm going to grab a stamp block and pick this up. Yeah, I think this will work. And let's grab our Memento black ink. Sorry, y'all, I had to grab a sip of drink because I am as dry as a bone. I'm going to ink this up really good. And then I am going to stamp this as straight as I possibly can. Sometimes it's hard when you're filming because you can't get directly over your piece. Not bad. Not bad at all. I'll take it. So all I did was just spray a little bit of plain water on that because my Stampin' Chamois had gotten a little bit dry. So now I'm just going to take and rub that stamp. The good thing about the, um, the, Sim the Simply Chamois is that you can take this to the sink and wash it. Now, it will not come clean, but it will be clean. It just The stains will stay on it because it will be stained, but you will not have any um, ink in it. You can wash that ink out. And this is pretty much what one looks like without the ink in the middle when you get it. Um, and I keep mine in one of the stamp cases. We do sell those. And I will link those in the video description as well along with the products. So if you do want to pick up one of these Stampin' Chamois and a case to keep it in, you can. Or when you're using it, you can put it in a Ziploc bag to keep it moist. And then when you're finished with it, just leave it on top of your bag and let it dry out so that it doesn't build up mold or mildew or anything. Just, you know, you don't want mold and mildew on your uh, cleaning cloth. That wouldn't be good. So, okay, we got that done. So, the other thing, if you wanted to frame this, so say, for example, you really wanted this to kind of pop, we could actually do this and do it in a different color. We could do the curry. So, I have a piece of the curry right here, and I'm going to show you just how simple it would be to cut out one of these. And then we can cut this right in two. Just take your scissors. You don't have to, doesn't have to be rocket science or anything like that. And I think I'm going to cut it this way. You can cut it this way and have it top and bottom where it would be, you know, I don't know, maybe I like it top and bottom. Yeah, I think I do. So I'm going to cut it in half this way. 
I changed my mind. Can you can y'all believe that? <laughs> oh my goodness. And any of y'all that are watching for the first time, everybody that knows me knows I always change my mind. And see what we're gonna do? We're just gonna glue that down on there. So I'm just gonna take a little glue and run it right across this edge like that and then I'm going to bring this piece to it just enough to frame it and you want to wiggle it just a tiny bit so you're getting it nice and even and see how that frames that and just makes it look I don't know it just kind of gives it a finished touch I think so we're going to do that right here as well and then come down here And put that on like so. And now this is ready. Press it down. And we're ready to put this on our card. So we're just going to take some Stampin' Dimensionals and come in right there. Again, I'm using my, my bits and pieces. Let me get another larger piece like the one I just did. And we are going to put one more piece right here. And then let's lift this off. Just like so. And now we are going to put this, hmm, maybe I, now that I framed it, I want it over here. See, you, you can always change your mind when you're crafting. You might think that you want something done one way, and then when you get ready to commit, you might have a whole different idea. So I am going to put that down right there. Isn't that gorgeous? What a pretty but yet simple card to throw together. And it was no more than some embellishments that I did, that I actually, let me um, get this a better fold right here. But this is nothing more than some die cuts that I cut using the Pierce Balloon. I used a punch for this, the Itty Bitty Stamp Set, a piece of um, Blushing Bride cardstock, and a piece of the Playing With Patterns paper that I cut. So easy to do this because it's so easy to measure in all the way around that one and a half inch and then connect your marks and cut it and it just gives you a beautiful accent piece to, to build around. So there's three cards already y'all. So we got a pink one, a blue one, and a purple one. And let's see what other color Let's do the coral. Let's do the coral. Did I finish up all of those pieces? I don't know that I did. Let's see. Nope, I think I had one more over here. Maybe I want to do that. Yeah, I'm going to wait on this one. You know why? I want to do this. I want to do this one. This one's beautiful. Oh, I like this one too. Oh, 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 decisions. Hmm, I think I'm going to do that one over here and this one on here. Yep, I love that. And again, we can do it this way. Let's see how many we have. We've got one this way and one this way and one this Yeah, this one we need to do in this orientation because I wanted to do one each way. So I'm going to turn this back around. And I'm going to line it up just like that. Just like that. Oh, that's so pretty. Let's go ahead and put some glue on this. I'm going to... Yeah, we're going to put it down like that. So I'm going to line a little glue along here. Just like so. And now we're going to glue this down. 
There we go. And now we're going to put one of these right here. Oh, this is so pretty. Look how it's playing into that. But I think I want to do one of the purple posies in the middle. Or do I want to play on the dark? Oh, the dark is going to be pretty. Oh, yeah. I love it. I love it. I love it. Is that not gorgeous? So we are going to do the same thing we did before. We're just going to build our flowers. Build up our flowers just like we did a while ago. Just like that. And maybe we'll do a purple one. Maybe I want a different one. Maybe we want this one. So let's cut this one out of the Yeah, let's cut this one. I've, I've still got plenty of the purple posy, so I'm going to run this through my dye machine. And like I said, it's so easy if you have a dye machine where you can just have it set up on the side of your desk, and it's so easy just to keep it set up, and then all you have to do is just roll through whatever you want to cut, and it makes it so, so, so simple. And, oh. Look at that. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Let's see. Do we want to do some... Mm. We got some of these. We could put one of those in there. That would look cute and different, wouldn't it? Oh, we got these. I think for something a little different, I'm going to do this. I think I really like that. And it gives it just a little bit different pop. So, where do I want to build my flowers? Do I want to do them over here? And then we'll do a sentiment down here. We still got all of these sentiments. Um... Your kindness means more than you could ever imagine. I love that. Let's see if we want to bring our flowers down and maybe run this across the top. We might even put it on a strip. How about a strip of that Knight of Navy? That would be so pretty. Uh, yes, I'm committing. I'm committing. We're going to put the flowers down here. I'm going to use this one here and this one here. And we're probably going to do one more, maybe right there. Maybe with the purple posy in the middle. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and commit to putting the flowers together. So I'm going to pick up my pieces, um, put my glue down. Just like that. And maybe we'll do it kind of like this. And then we might just drop some of these in every here and there. And we need some green leaves, so let's stick a leaf maybe right, right here. So the first thing I think I want to do is start putting the flowers down. Now this one I want to pop up. So again, we're going to come in and grab our dimensionals. And take that off. Just 
just like that and this one I think I want to tuck it under and we're going to glue this one straight down I love the look of one popped up and the other one kind of growing under it like that and then another one popped up something like that and we're going to lay this one down right about there and then this leaf needs to come out from right there so a little glue and you know again there is no right or wrong way to do this you make your card your own you do you and it will not be wrong you put it down the way you like it, and I guarantee whoever's getting it is not going to critique it and say, oh my goodness, she should have glued this down here or that down there. They're going to look at the card and say, oh my word, she made that? Believe me, I have stressed and stressed over cards that I've made and was afraid to send them. And I finally got past that because that was just total ridiculousness on my part. Because, you know, if somebody feels that way, they really don't deserve to get one of your cards. That is that is literally the way I feel about it. Um, so don't stress over it. If you want to send somebody a card, you send it. And I guarantee you that it will be received in love and affection, and the person will love you so much for thinking enough to sit down and construct something just for them. So don't be afraid. Never ever be afraid. So let's go ahead and put this one there. And I want that leaf coming up right about there. And I'm wondering if I want to put a center here or if I want to just drop this over here I think I'm just going to drop this over here about there I like that just like so and then these little leaves I think we're going to stick those right up underneath that petal might, might need to put a little bit of glue on that just a tiny bit and stick it up under turn it just in a tiny bit and there we go now we just need to cut our strip so let's get our bone uh, our bone folder i'm looking at my bone folder and saying bone folder I think I need a break. <laughs> I have I have been crafting all day, y'all, and I think it's time for me to take a break. I'm going to do about three-eighths of an inch because I just want to border this or, or border um, that sentiment on that navy blue or that night of navy. And see what I mean? This is going to be so cute. I'm going to bring it down about to there and we can cut that off so let's go ahead and put some glue and what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this down on my work surface I'm being brave I should put my silicone craft sheet under here but I'm being brave and I'm just rubbing some glue all the way down that piece then I'm going to lift it up on my finger and I'm going to bring it all the way over on this side where I want it to land and then I'm just going to press it all the way across that piece. And you see what I mean? That's just bordering it all the way across. Isn't that pretty? And then all I'm going to do down here is just snip it. Just like that. Now we got this beautiful sentiment that we can put right across the top. Just like that. And that card is done. So this one I'm not going to pop up. I'm going to glue it straight down to the card because it is kind of a narrow piece and we are going to put it right here across the top just like that 
And then we can put a big thank you on the inside, and that card is done. So look at what we did in just a short amount of time. And all I need to do now is go back and cut some white um, card pieces to go inside of each one of these. And I may even come back with my uh, stamp set, the um, in bloom stamp set, and stamp some of these pretty flowers on the inside just to coordinate with everything on the outside. But I love the way these turned out. You look how beautiful these are. And let's get all of this out of our way so we can look at them. And what do y'all think? Which one is your favorite? I love those. I think they're, I think they're darling. Oh, I thought I did. Oh yeah, this one goes this way. I was like, oh no. I thought I did two portrait and two landscape, and I did. But aren't they gorgeous? And each one is done in a different shade of cardstock. Calypso Coral, Purple Posy, Blushing Bride, Knight of Navy. And I use the same paper on each one of them. Well, no, these two have one paper. These three have one paper, and this one has the other paper, because I still have this piece. I still have this piece, and I still have a couple more cards here that I can still work with. So I still have two more cards that I can make. So I am so excited. I love the way these turned out. I think that they... Each one of them lends itself to being a little bit different than the other one, and yet you could put these in a set and give them away, and what a wonderful gift this would make. Mother's Day is coming up. We're going to be doing working on some projects for Mother's Day pretty soon, so stay tuned because I think every mother, every daughter, every woman in your life, whether it be your aunt, whether it be your um, a cousin, a sister, um, a, a daughter-in-law, anybody would love to have a set of cards made like this. And they're, they're so easy to do. So until we stamp again, God bless you all. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Ring the bell and you can uh, set the thing for all and you'll get every notification every time I put up a video. That way you won't miss anything that I do. And remember, my videos are always there so you can come back and watch them anytime. They do not go away. So again, until we craft um, again, remember what I always say in closing. Let everything and I mean everything that you do and say, bring glory to our Father in heaven. He is so worthy and he is so good. And we are blessed, are blessed, blessed people. So until we craft again, God bless you and keep you. I love you all so much. Bye-bye.